Section 534 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Hi, I'm Jonathan Gardner. Um, I'm going to go fast, but you can always rewind. If you have any questions, you can put in the video uh, response or comments below. So, um, Maxwell's equations. This is the first time you're going to see them. And this is not the complete Maxwell's equation. This is Maxwell's equations for um, uh, electrostatics and magnetostatics. So we have the divergence of uh, the electric field is 1 over epsilon naught rho. Okay, that's Gauss's law. And the curl of the electric field is obviously uh, 0. Nobody gets credit for that. Um, meanwhile, the divergence of the magnetic field is equal to 0, and nobody gets credit for that. But um, Ampere gets credit for discovering this relation. Okay, um, so we call these mag uh, Maxwell's equations for electrostatics, and these are Maxwell's equations for magnetostatics. Um, the if you set the boundary conditions um, of of the electric field being zero at infinity and likewise the, the magnetic field being zero at infinity, then these are all you really need to calculate the electric field and the magnetic field in magneto and electrostatics. Um, and you can use this force equation equals the test charge, E vector, uh, plus the V vector cross the V vector of this torque test charge. And this is um, the Lorentz force law, as we've seen before. This is really he says elegant and fundamental equation, and it is. Um, the interesting thing is the electric field diverges away from a positive charge. So if you have a ch positive charge, you get this electric field emanating away from it. Um, magnetic fields curl around moving charge. Okay, There is no point charge, as far as we know, for magnetic fields, that would be a magnetic monopole. Um, it's it's really funny the magnetic monopoles. Um, we've never seen any evidence of one, although theories seem to show that there should be one. Um, it just kind of makes sense for everything. Um, in fact, um, the interesting thing is that um, some of the recent elementary particle theories require the existence of, le of at least one monopole somewhere in the universe in order for particles to exist. So it's, it's, you know, the fact that these particles exist and that theory is elegant suggests that indeed there is at least one monopole in the universe somewhere. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of research into finding a monopole. We're, we haven't seen one yet. We can't say there's no monopoles anywhere, um, unfortunately. But for our purposes, you're, you're probably not going to encounter a monopole anytime you use these equations unless you're going to research monopoles. So um, the divergence of B is always going to be zero. The moving electric charge produces a magnetic field. Um, that's why we didn't have magnetic fields in electrostatics. Nothing was moving. It takes another moving charge to feel that magnetic field. So unless you have you know, a charge over here moving and a charge over here moving, you're not going to experience any kind of force between them through the magnetic field. Um, why, why, why is it that way? Um, that's something that you could think about. Um, interesting thing I found on Wikipedia is that um, the magnetic field has something to do with the vortices in aerodynamics. So look that up if you want to take a look at it's something interesting to think about. Magnetic fields are extraordinarily weak we wouldn't be able to feel them if it weren't for the fact that there was so much charge moving, right? And um, why is it so weak? Well, there's a relationship between epsilon naught and mu naught and the speed of light. And unless a charge is traveling near the speed of light, the magnetic field it produces is, is insignificant. Um, it's only the fact that we're pouring so much charge moving across the wire that you feel it at all. If if you're pouring the, that, that charge across the wire and it's not quite balanced and you get some kind of imbalance in the number of charges that are positive and negative, the electric field is going to dominate even in that case. Um, so,
this is the interesting thing. The, this is the beginning of even more parallels that you're going to see between magnetostatics and electrostatics. And um, I believe by the time we get to relativity and stuff, you're going to see why magnetism doesn't really exist. It's just a weird manifestation of relativistic laws with the electric fields and stuff. So that's that's a bit of an appetizer for what's going to come. But here's a this is a good you know preview of what's going to happen when we get into uh, electrodynamics proper. So anyway, take care. Have fun. Bye.